Hello, my fellow letter appreciators. This is No Number Man, and welcome back to Let's Create a Game in C Sharp. Yes, we are starting all over again because, well, what I did in the last series might have been more than a year ago since I made the last episode, and, well, maybe, maybe not. A lot has changed in that time. Right, uh, OpenTK has released their 4.0 version and that has changed a lot of things. So let's just get started all over again. And yeah, here we are in Visual Studio 2019, I think. And yeah, so I clicked the new project button and we are going to create a new project. Going to select C Sharp all platforms and console. Yes, let's create a simple console app for now. I'm going to select .NET Core because now OpenTK fully supports .NET Core. So that is quite nice and it should be able to run on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. You see it right there. So we are fully platform agnostic, independent and all of that good stuff. So let's do it. What are we going to call it? I'm going to call it no number game. Oh yes, I am incredibly creative, as you might have guessed. Then I need to browse. There we go. So I have selected my game dev no number game location, my folder there. So I want to create a new solution, yes, and the solution name should be no number game. That is completely fine. And I do not actually want to place a solution and a project in the same directory because later I think I want to split our project into a library part and a console application part. Okay, let's go create. It will take Visual Studio a little while to get this going. And there we are. Program, I got an error list. I don't know why that's there. Shouldn't have any errors. And yeah, so we have our program. I'm just going to leave program there for now. I'm going to make it public. Of course, we are going to rename all of this later. But for now, I think I just want to get a window going. And yeah, that should keep us busy for a little bit. There we go. Program, public static void, main, hello world. Let's just check that this works. I want any CPU, that's fine. Debug is fine. Just want to see if it works at all. Hello world. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I pressed the one too many times. Now, the first thing that we are going to want to do is install OpenTK. That will help us create the window and basically do anything graphics related in our new game. So we are going to go to NuGet packages. Right click on the, on the game here, on the project. Then of course we have nothing installed. So let's just go to browse. And then here we can look for OpenTK. Yes, and then OpenTK, just the first one by team OpenTK. And then yeah, just latest stable version. That's fine. That is fine. Just install it. And then that shouldn't give us any issues. Yes. And yeah, of course, I need all of these dependencies. So that's okay. There we go. We got it. This should work now. I don't know why I got an error list again. Oh, maybe I should look into that. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. It, it works though, so I'm not sure why I'm getting that. In any case, for now, I can here import using OpenTK dot. And then I want, let's see. So some things change. I think I need platform.windows. Right. That won't make it platform agnostic, I don't think. Now I don't need platform.windows. Okay, good. Let's just see what I need though. Because yes, some of these folders have changed, so I'm not entirely sure where everything will be. What else do we have? Platform, core, graphics, audio, compute, inputs, mathematics, opening out, windowing. Well, you know, maybe I should have looked at this first. Windowing. That sounds like something where the window would be. You can have common or desktop. Let's do, do desktop and then game window. Yes, that is the one that we want. We want a game window. So I can just import this using, there we go. 
and then we can just do game window window equals new game window and then we need game window settings and native window settings so let's get some of those of course i am using resharper so some of these visual studio features aren't really visual studio features uh, they are resharper features maybe i should disable this let me know if that bothers you i believe it gives me a little bit different autocomplete here but I'm not entirely sure. I've had this extension for so long that by now I have completely forgotten what default Visual Studio looks like. So yeah, let me know if that's, a, that's an issue. Anyways, we can see here in the game window, we need game window settings and native window settings as parameters. So let's just go game window settings. Uh, game window settings equals game window settings of default. And then native window settings settings native window settings equals native window settings the default then we can just give those and yes there we go that should give us a valid window and with that we can do window.run and yes that should just work this should just work let's try that here we go and here we get a very tiny little OpenTK <laughs> default window that basically does absolutely nothing. It doesn't even resize properly, but it is a window. And we should be able to close it. Yes, there we go. And then we exit properly. Now that is quite nice. Now, of course, we will want to customize our window a little bit. So let's do that. You can go to the game window settings that we just created and then just check is multi-threaded. So this kind of determines whether we have just one thread just handling everything or whether we have two threads, one for updating everything and one for rendering everything. We will get more into what the difference is and how to use this later on. For now, I will keep it simple and say that we do not want any multi-threading. Right, so it will just be one thread and it will just be one continuous block of instructions and things that we will do without any weird threading stuff, which can be difficult at times, even for seasoned developers. Okay, then we have render frequency. So that is how often we want to render to the screen. And this is usually 60 FPS, right? So let's just do 60. This is in Hertz, I believe. Yes, it's, it's in Hertz. So 60 means 60 times per second, which is 60 FPS, of course. And the update frequency should just be the same for now. That should be okay. But of course we can't really check any of this very easily. We'll just have to assume that this actually does what we want to. If it doesn't work, then we don't really care at this point in time anyways. Okay, right now, so the API version, it's probably okay to leave most of this default. I think we are going to be using OpenGL 4.0. So for API version, I want OpenGL 4.1, which it says here in the tooltip is suggested for modern apps meant to run on more modern hardware. This will run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So that's completely okay. So I want to set that. And yes, it seems that they don't have an enum with just everything specified for us. So we will need to do version.parse and then add a string, which will be 4.1.0, if I read that correctly. Maybe just 4.1, I'm not sure. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, if this gives us an error or not, but I think that should work. And then... And what else do we want? Autoload bindings, that should be true by default. That will make sure that all of the functions are loaded properly. Current monitor, that should be done uh, properly by default. Icon is something that I don't want to change just yet. That is the cute little window icon that is at the top right of every screen. And of course, at the bottom of your uh, desktop at the toolbar. Then the icon, oh yeah, the icon we did is events driven. It says right here, an events driven window will wait for events before updating rendering. That is, yeah, it's useful for non-game applications. 
programs that really don't need to keep running constantly. But of course we are making a game, so yeah, this is good by default. Full screen, no, I don't want full screen. That is quite annoying to debug because you constantly need to go on full screen to reach your controls here. And location, location was in the middle, I think by default, that was fine. Number of samples, doesn't seem very important. Indicates that no multi-sampling should be used. No, we don't need any of that. Let's just skip to what we do want. So we do want the size. And for this, I guess we have a vector. So I can make a new vector 2i, which just stores two integer values, a width and a height. So let's make a width of 1280 and a height of 720. And it should be a nice size for our window. Then we can change where is the size, where did we get that? Oh, it's gone from the list, of course, of course it is. Uh, shared context, no, start focused. Yes, it's on by default. Start visible is on by default title. We want to change that. We want to change it to no number gimme. There we go. And I think it is about everything that we want to change right here. So let's just check this out. Yes, so now the screen is bigger. It got placed over here. That's that's totally okay. That's a nice starting position. We have no number game and the icon here is just a default icon. So we haven't changed that, of course. Okay. Well, this is coming along nicely. Next, what we could do is we could change some things about our configuration because any CPU doesn't really do it for me. Can we get, yes, specifically, I want to work on a 64-bit system. Basically, any even remotely new PC has 64-bit operating system, right? It has a 64-bit processor. So we can make use of that. And that is what I want to do. So that's uh, copy settings from any CPU. That's fine. But I do want specifically to target 64-bit systems. And then create new project platforms. Yes, that's fine. We have configuration debug and release platform x64 build deploy. Yes, this is all good. So now we can go to the properties. Here we go. No number game, no number game. Of course, we have .NET Core 3.1. That is perfect. Console application. Yes. Startup object. We want this one. No number game. Dot program. We can also change the icon here. It looks like. Uh, but we won't do that. We will use just purely OpenTK for all of this. Yes, then we have x64. That is good. Nullable. I want to enable this. This is a great C sharp feature that I really miss in other languages. So I want to enable this. Yes, I also want to enable unsafe code because we might want to use that later on. And well, this is debug. Oh, wait. Yes, I should do all configurations in this case. Then I want to enable, yes, nullable, and I want to allow unsafe code. And then, of course, in release mode, I want to optimize as well. There we go. We're on level four is fine. This is all fine. Should save, of course. Build events, package is totally fine. Version 1.0.0, yeah, that is basically what this is, right? Debug. Yeah, that is all good signing. We don't need that. Code analysis, run on build, run on live analysis is good. Enforce code style on build. I'm not going to do that because I use the resharper extension for my code style. So I'm not going to let Visual Studio handle that. That's maybe not a good idea. Maybe it's something for you, but it's not necessary in any case. And then enable .NET analyzers. That should be all fine. Yes. Okay, and now just one last thing here is we can do window dot update update frame. Now we can add a new function, and we'll make a lambda out of this if I can type that is. And then in here I can do what does it ask? Right, it says delegate action frame event arcs. So I need frame event arcs arcs in here. And of course, I need to import that. Yes. And that will work. And that means that this inner function, this lambda that I just created here, will just fire 
every frame, on every update frame. So in this section, I can basically do whatever I want. And I can say, let us say something cool like uh, int i equals zero. And then here I can print like i, that's not how you do that. So let me put this uh, dollar sign in front and then I can just put everything that I want inside of the string. I really love this dollar sign. It is beautiful in real life and in programming. So yes, then I, here I can add i plus plus and that should just count upwards for us. Let's check that out. Here we go. And it's just counting upwards 60 times per second. We should look at that. And yeah, that means that in here we can basically do whatever game functionality we want to, to have, right? We can have like an int player x equals zero. And then in here I can do something like, well, just every frame, just say player x plus equals one. And then of course I can just print the player position player x. And there we go. So this is going to be it for this episode. It's nice and short, I hope, because last time I created some pretty long videos. Now, because this is the first episode of this new series, I'm going to take some time right now to just talk a little bit about what I want to accomplish with this series. So listen to this part or not, do whatever you want. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button of course maybe leave a comment if something goes wrong if you need help with anything i am always looking at the comments so i i hope that i can help you in, in any case so yeah anyway this series I, I i went a little bit fast here i hope it wasn't too fast right uh, i'm going to assume for the rest of this series that you have some understanding of c sharp or at least some understanding of programming in general. Maybe a little bit of C related programming, because of course, if you only know Python, then this is going to look very strange to you. So yes, I'm not going to give a C sharp course here, unfortunately. If you want to see that though, just let me know in the comments. If there is enough people asking me for that, then sure, I'll absolutely make a C sharp tutorial. Yeah. No doubt, I will. So yeah, let me know that. For now though, I think in the next episode, I want to continue this and I want to get something on screen, right? Probably a triangle. So we will need something like a shader. We will go through that quite quickly because I already made an episode on it before that was more quote unquote in depth. Of course, it is already like one and a half years ago since I made that. So it's not the most top quality video out there. But it's very basic and you can find a lot of videos on how to create shaders. So I want to get through this first part relatively quickly. And I want to get into the juicy stuff. The stuff where there really aren't that many videos about it. Something like a shadow map. Have you ever created a 3D game and then thought, well, maybe I want to add some shadows here. And I want to make that like dynamic. So I want to make the shadow move together with the player or the enemies or something like that then yeah, there really aren't that many videos on shadow maps, even though they are incredibly useful and they are really not that hard to make, but you just kind of need to know how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it and you can't find a tutorial, then it, then it is quite hard actually, because then you need to reinvent the wheel and that's always quite hard. So yes, in the next episode, I just want to get through shaders and I want to get a triangle on the screen. Then the episode after that, I want to get into VAOs, vertex array objects. And I just want to get a nice and basic rendering system going such that after that, we can actually get to programming a basic game. Something like, well, I don't know, something with a spaceship just shooting up comets or, or enemies or something like that, like aliens. That could be fun, right? That could be a lot of fun. So yes, this really was it. If you have any suggestions, again, let me know in the comments. That's what they are there for. And then I hope to see you in the next episode. All right, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye.